there were Germans in the pizza bar, express or whatever it was. Germans? God, Arthur, how awful. He said, yes, it was, Daddy. But there was some good news, too. I said, what was that, Arthur? One of them was disabled. <laughs> I was a cracker. I thought, that's my boy. <laughs> The Simpsons. We have no response at all during The Simpsons. Who would like a hundred pounds? Me! Oh, some response. Since marrying Francis and becoming great Fulford's cook, cleaner, and chief bottle washer, Cassandra spends what little spare time she has looking for lost treasure. This is my after tea pastime, looking for treasure. Other people watch The Simpsons. This is an old staircase to find my office, and I've never really had a look in here. See, what you have to look for is just little, little hidey places like one I've just seen down there. Where my torch is going. Carmen's mustard. Oh! Ow! Really hurt my toe. That's probably worth a fortune. Somebody would want to. Until they find the hidden treasure, the Fulfords try more realistic ways of raising money. Today, a guided tour of the house at five pounds a head. Are you busy, darling? Well, I'm waiting for these people, aren't I? I'm darling, losing. they're coming. What? It's two o'clock. I thought you said they'd come at twelve o'clock. Oh, I hope not. But you don't ever listen to me. I, I said... Two. Oh, I see. I've just geared up for them to arrive now. Well. I do tours now and again. People ring up, bring a coach load of somebody, X pounds a head, doing nothing that afternoon. Why not? You get a kick out of it. I get a kick out of it. I really like it. I like it because I like it if I've given people a good time. You know, I feel like giving people a good time. I suppose that's a, a bit like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> probably gets the same feeling now and again with her customers. Before the Fulfords customers arrive, there's just time to brush away a few cobwebs and sweep some dust under the carpets. Perhaps you could with the duster. Da -da. Darling, would you like to go around the big rooms with the duster? I've gone around the rooms. I'm oh, they're fine. I wouldn't bother. It's only 60 quid. It's not a bleeding fortune. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, I'm going to go dusting. Are you coming or not? No. Edmund! Humphrey, Humphrey. Edmund! Arthur! Oh, God. Oh, this is just so boring. Right, ladies and gentlemen, now, for those of you who don't know, I haven't said hello to you. I'm Francis Fulford. Now, I apologise for these goons with the camera, right? But they're just part of a deal which I'm doing. They're part of a money-making venture, like you are. Oh, they come in. Oh, give that to Matilda and Francis for lunch if they're not careful. This is the Great Hall. There's somebody there who looks like a Negro, and there's some very old person there who looks like an Italian. <laughs> Let's get the, like, lived-in look. <laughs> Above the fireplace was a picture of a battle and my ancestor, Sir John Fulford, commanded a squadron of ships and the end result was 5,000 dead Frenchmen, which was a satisfactory result all round. All this is bat droppings. Look, bat. Look, bats everywhere. They go everywhere. There is Thomas Fulford, who was killed at the Siege of Exeter. But it was painted sometime after his death, and there's his wife weeping on his grave in the bottom right-hand corner, naked. I wonder if my wife will weep naked on my grave. <laughs> One doubts it somehow, but there we are. That room there, uh, that's old ante room, and that collapsed longer. It used to be my father's lavatory, actually. <laughs> he always was coming here after breakfast. It was very useful, because it was the only time of the day when everybody knew where my father was. <laughs> <laughs> If you were to sit down and 
think about opening a house for the public. They demand facilities. Putting in facilities costs bloody money. No way would anybody with a fucking brain spend the necessary money on the expectation of getting people round the house spending five pounds a knob. We ain't going to make economic sense. Darling, a hundred quid. What? hundred quid. Well, that'll pay for a fucking metal detector, I suppose, won't it? But Kishanda has other plans for the coach party money. A bold investment with her turf accountant. I'm looking for the racing. I used to know exactly where it was until I had my advances. Because somebody's told me what's going to win the 220 at Carlisle. Arthur, you're very good at maths. 200 pounds at 60 to 1. Yeah. What's the answer? It's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. No, is it? no. 10,800. Well, which? There's a difference. 10,800. Is it? I better get my calculator. It sounds too good to be true. Where's my car? Oh, you don't want anybody who is naturally addictive to things, do you? So if you look at a girl you fancy marrying, you look at uncles and cousins and fathers and grandfathers, and you see a bit of a history of um, alcoholism, gambling, various other sins, it's wise to stay clear, because it's bad blood. Said not bloody good blood, it's bad blood. Uh, can you tell me what price enchantment is in the 220 at Carlisle, please? 50 pounds each way. Bookies always win in the end, don't they? You have to be pretty thick and stupid to be a gambler anyway. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Kushanda has won over a thousand pounds, but that money is not going into the ancestral home. Instead, she's off to London to treat herself. She's going off. She's going up to London there for a couple of days, see a few people. That means me and the dogs can relax a bit. I can't remember what you're doing in London, but that's really immaterial. What do girls do in London anywhere? Go to the hairdresser or spend money and see old friends and have lunch and drink too many bottles of white wine, I suspect. Bye, Poppet. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> Poor will do that. Do you know where we're for? Basically, we're on holiday, aren't we? When the cat's away, the mice shall go on holiday. <laughs> It's always wise to keep out of range when mud bathing commences. But you could see the fun, did you fancy? A dip. Granny pays 200 quid on some expensive toy and it comes in a big box and it gets out of a big box and then the children end up playing in the big box and don't play with a 250 quid toy. You know, have simple fun. This is simple fun, isn't it? We all really like throwing mud at each other. No. Mud is good for the skin. You know, but is a potential there. A potential for a spa. Fat Americans. <laughs> fat Germans, yeah. Germans are fat and so are Americans. The reason is because there were a lot of Germans went to America. You know, there's obviously a fat German gene in there bursting to come out. And it does. Though I say it myself, that looks so absolutely perfectly cooked chicken. Do you agree that? What? Shut up! Stop prodding it! Mother! You, that chicken's not... Oh, it is cooked. Your mother always overcooks everything. It's a double cooking. 